I have several synthetic stones with me today. Um, all three of these are antiques. These two are carborundums that are uh, just at, if not slightly over 100 years old. This one, uh, I believe, is actually slightly older. It's uh, an India stone, so there's a red India and a, and a white India. Um, this stone was pretty beat up when I got it. Um, these were all given to me by family members, so I'm not sure what happened to this, but it's it's been uh, abused quite a bit. Um, on this side, it looks like somebody took a chisel or a knife or a plane iron or something to pull out some maybe they slagged a nail or something with the end of a chisel um, I would recommend if you're gonna pull out uh, some dings and nicks in the end of a blade to do it this way um, on the stone if you're gonna do it that way as opposed to this way where the the chisel makes cut marks into your stone and this will do this uh, especially if you're gonna do it in water stones definitely go this way or use sandpaper um, sandpaper or, or a grinding wheel which is probably the best solution um, but if you don't have a grinding wheel this is an okay way to do it just make sure that you're not cutting your stone these two stones were in pretty poor shape when I got them as well um, I've managed to clean this one up pretty well flatten the surface um, both of them were just caked in uh, oil uh, that had hardened on the surface along with a lot of dust and debris. Cleaning these stones is not uh, the simplest of tasks, but it's also not overwhelmingly complicated. I've got uh, a bread pan or meatloaf pan that, uh, that I fill with kerosene and I can put the stone in there. Uh, you really only need it just slightly over the surface of the stone. Uh, really all you want to do is get the kerosene to work its way into the stone and float out the particles that have embedded their way into the surface of this stone. So you really want to just clean it out. I've also heard of people um, putting sand or rocks in the bottom of this and filling it with water, uh, or even a rag in the bottom and filling it with water and then setting the stone on top of the sand or the rag to keep it from hitting hot spots when you place this then on the stove to heat the water. So you're, you're essentially making like a disgusting stone soup. Um, that, uh, that you want to use the warm water to pull the particulate out of the stone. You can use uh, washing soda, which is uh, sort of like a laundry detergent, which you could probably find in the detergent aisle at a grocery store, um, or a little bit of dishwashing detergent, uh, just something to work its way in and loosen the oil's bond on the stone. Uh, and as it floats out the oil, it'll also float out the swarf and the, uh, the slurry that has dried on the surface of the stone or seeped its way into the pores of the stone. Um, this is especially an issue in some of the more porous stones, um, like the Lily White or the Washita stones. Um, simply because they're more porous, they're more apt to absorb some of that. Uh, a good way to prevent some of that is to wipe these stones off after you use them. So after you've been sharpening on them, um, you know, put a little oil on there and just wipe them clean with a rag. I like to use a separate rag for each style stone I have, um, simply because I don't want to mix abrasives uh, or cutting medium from, say, uh, this carborundum, which is you know a fairly fast cutting, uh, higher grit stone, to something. Like uh, like this this white India or or a, even a higher end stone, um, I don't own a lot of oil stones, um, particularly for the reason that I started with a big box store cheapo that really didn't do a good job. Um, as I've been experimenting more and more with oil stones, I really really like them. They they cut fast. They almost never uh, dish or hollow like the the water stones. <clears throat> um, and they they last and last and because I use oil on the surface I don't have to worry about it freezing like my water stones do especially because I have an unheated workshop uh, and I'm, I'm frequently working outside um, just on, on job sites or uh, timber framing or whatever it happens to be I find myself outside in cold weather a lot so the oil stones are nice because I don't have to worry about it freezing up alright so that's cleaning out the stone uh, you can also put them in the dishwasher. I've heard a lot of people have tried this. Um, <laughs> my wife would probably kill me if she found out I was putting sharpening stones in our dishwasher. 
Um, so I'll just wait till she's gone to give it a try, maybe. Uh, don't tell her I said that, please. <laughs> um, but the, the putting them in the dishwasher is probably similar to soaking them in hot water, except that uh, the rapid heat drying in the dishwasher could pull a lot more moisture out than, say, when you, when you pull it out of the, the pan, sending it onto a towel or something to let it dry. Um, you definitely want to let these uh, dry, whether it's by a little bit of heat or whether it's by air drying or setting them in some warm sawdust or whatever it happens to be. Um, get as much water out of the stone as you can. Um, that just aids in their ability to absorb oil as you re-soak them in oil. Um, you do want them to be well saturated in a high quality oil uh, before you begin to use them. And then uh, as you use them, you put a little on the surface. And we'll get, show you a demonstration of that in a little bit. These stones, because they've been used for so long, and I, I think this one especially had been used to sharpen knives, um, simply because just the edge was really worn out. To flatten these stones is very simple. We do it almost uh, the exact same way that we flattened our water stones, um, which was the previous uh, blog post video, uh, if you'd like to check that out. For these though, instead of using my diamond, uh, the DMT diamond plate or the Norton flattening stone, I like to use plate, uh, float glass and some sandpaper, simply because the oil won't contaminate uh, any of my other mediums when, when I do that. I can just throw the sandpaper away. This is a piece of float glass. I showed this in the uh, sharpening overview video. I got this from a uh, glass cutter uh, near where I work, and it was a second. So it was one that somebody either didn't come pick up or they cut to the wrong size, but it was perfect for me. It was uh, It's nice and long, it had beveled edges, and it's uh, a little over a quarter of an inch thick, so it's nice and heavy duty. <clears throat> um, they make float glass by actually uh, floating the glass, floating the molten glass over top of a machine piece of steel to let it cool so it ends up with a perfectly flat surface. Um, sometimes they're even rolled between um, two sheets of steel uh, although I think that ends up in a different type of glass. <clears throat> but uh, but this, has, this checks out to be extremely flat um, especially for my purposes of sharpening chisels and plain irons and knives on this. Um, but to flatten the stones is relatively easy. We've got uh, some adhesive backed 220 silicon carbide wet dry sandpaper, which I would just cut a sheet of. Okay, once I've got it cut off of here, I'll take this piece of adhesive backed sandpaper and stick it to the surface of this float glass. Uh, the adhesive on the back of these uh, pre-rolled sheets are not always the best, so a lot of times I'll use a 3M spray adhesive uh, or another type of glue on the back. Um, I just want to make sure that it stays on the surface. I've seen a lot of people use just water, um, especially with the sheet sandpaper, but I've had a lot of mixed results with water only in that uh, the sandpaper tends to curl at the edges, um, which is like having a dished stone. Um, it it uh, I'm probably doing something wrong with that, but I, I, I don't uh, usually have good results with water only. So the adhesive works well, and then uh, when I finish, I just scrape it off with a window scraper um, if it leaves any residue behind. Uh, a little Windex will clean it up too. So once we've got this stuck to our glass, then we'll take our stone, and uh, I'll start with this good beat up one here. Um, <clears throat> we'll mark our grid just like the water stones. So you want to make sure you've got pencil lines in all the quadrants of your stone. They don't have to be perfect, just as long as they're visible, and there's plenty of them. Alright, um, now you could take uh, a little bit of kerosene or some low odor mineral spirits, um, or a little lacquer thinner to use as a cutting fluid on this. Um, or if you have just cleaned your stone, um, you know, boiled it in the water or, or what have you, um, you can use a little bit of water as a cutting fluid on this. Uh, either way, um, I'm just going to use it dry for right now, uh, which is also an acceptable manner, uh, although it does tend to clog and eat up the sandpaper a little quicker. So we'll take it face down, apply a nice big even pressure to the face of the stone. You can see where we're wearing away the stone rather quickly. 
All right, uh, and already you can see where we were high here and here, uh, and low in the center of this stone where a lot of our uh, the darker stone, but also the pencil marks remain. Um, so we continue to work this on this piece of sandpaper, um, or this will probably go through a couple pieces of sandpaper, uh, knowing how badly uh, hollowed this stone is. Um, and for being <clears throat> close to 100 years old, these stones aren't really in too bad a shape. Uh, that's not, I mean, that's a pretty severe dip, but it's not uh, unfixable. Um, as with a lot of these stones that you would obtain in a, an antique store or a thrift shop or a flea market, um, you know, if, if, as long as they're not badly broken or too badly damaged, they're definitely fixable. Uh, you can clean the, the oil and the, the hardened mess off the surface uh, with the methods we talked about earlier. Flattening them, uh, you can do this on the, the plate glass or granite. Or, uh, or you can, you know, you can clean the stone and try it on a DMT, a, you know, a, a diamond plate or something. Uh, really all, you know, whatever it takes to get the surface flat. <clears throat> um, broken stones are even usable in their own right, uh, if you find some for cheap. You can use them to hand sharpen, uh, like lawnmower blades, um, some pocket knives, those sorts of things. Uh, basic tools that don't necessarily have to be absolutely razor sharp, uh, or that are better to sharpen with a small stone. Uh, sometimes draw knives uh, are, are better to sharpen with something rather, you know, rather small that you can get your fingers away from the blade. Um, so it's something a little easier to grip, something a little smaller, easier to maneuver uh, and be safe with on the blade. Um, <laughs> if you happen to pull some stones out of a random mixed bag uh, at, at a store, uh, to determine what type of stone you have, it's usually safest to default to water stone. Um, I would clean it up much the same way, um, you know, in some hot water. Uh, and then once you've got your stone fairly clean, start with water and use it on the surface of the stone as a cutting fluid initially and see how it cuts. Um, oil will ruin a water stone, uh, but water will not ruin an oil stone. Um, if, it, if it has a lot of oil in it and you use water on the stone, it may clog it a little bit faster, but it won't ruin the stone. Oil in a, in a water stone will actually ruin the stone for good. The cutting fluid I use most frequently is a 3-in-1 um, small motor oil. Um, this one's an SAE 20, uh, but they've got some different varieties out there. 3-in-1 is really cheap. It's easy to get. I can get it at uh, a lot of convenience stores, uh, hardware stores, almost all of them have it. Uh, even some craft and hobby places carry this. Uh, I use it partly because it's cheap and easy to get and also because it does a great job on my oil stones. It really uh, it works good as a, an excellent cutting fluid. Um, additionally, they make some high-end premium uh, honing oils. Norton Abrasives makes one um, for that they recommend for their stones, so if you get some Norton stones, I'd recommend just picking up a can of what they've got. Um, a good clean mineral oil will also work. Mineral oil is what I've got in this nifty little guy. Um, this is an old pump style oil can. You can hear it. Uh, I picked this up at an antique store. Um, the top screws off and you can fill it with uh, you know your oil of choice uh, and it just pumps out a little bit onto the stone. Um, it's also nice because it's got such a small tip I can use it to uh, apply oil basically anywhere I need it even into the small areas of a hand plane or, uh, or a mechanical part. <coughs> um, yeah these are real handy to have around. <coughs> Mineral oil I found I can mix okay with my 3-in-1 oil. Um, the viscosities are similar enough that it doesn't become a problem. Uh, I would caution against randomly mixing oils uh, for your oil stones in that sometimes they will react to each other and cause a gummy surface or build up on your stones, uh, clogging them that much faster. So it requires more cleaning and then uh, you know less time woodworking. <laughs>